this is part three of my whole little, I don't know, sharing a little part of my life that I haven't ever really shared on camera. At least not that in detail, uh, but don't worry. This is, uh, this is the lighter part. This is life after losing my mom. It's actually, it's not that bad. It is not that bad. The bad days can get really bad. So September 26th of this year marked the seventh anniversary of my mom's death and that day I was just like, I was just not really functioning that well because it's, it's just a reminder. You kind of go through everything bad that happened. Yeah, I also look at things differently. So I, I touched on this in the other videos, but I try to take care of myself a lot more than I think I would have had my mom not gotten sick, but I don't like that reason either. That's another part. You don't always understand why your parent gets diagnosed with cancer and then you lose them. That, I don't know. I'm still working on that one. I feel like a certain sense of growth that I think when I turned 19 and I, well, I didn't lose my mom right away at 19, but like 40 year olds sometimes lose their parents and they feel the exact same way. So age literally has nothing to do with it. But I was kind of forced to like, well, hello. <laughs> You're already like an adult, but like now you're legit an adult because I felt like an orphan. My father is has never been in the picture, is a total zero. And even that is an understatement. It's weird, guys. It's weird. It is really weird, but I don't go a day without talking about my mom. And I think that sometimes that's not helpful for other people. Like they just don't want to be in that kind of bubble. But for me, it keeps her around. And I'm never going to forget her. I'm never going to forget the wonderful moments that we had. But I also think of it like, wow, all these people that I've met in the last seven years don't know my mom. Like, don't like personally know her. So if I get to talk about her with them, then that's a way of carrying on her legacy. Besides just being, you know, a good person. <laughs> because if you think about it like that, we're our legacy. Like, we're their legacy in a way. My mom would always say that. You just have to think of it like that, you know. Every October, I think like, okay, now everyone's gonna be talking about breast cancer awareness. And because it's the month for that, well, what about the other 11 months when you're still like stupid breast cancer? Like why, why? My mom's tumor was this big and yet by the time she was diagnosed, it had spread to stage four. Why did she have to go through all of these things? I don't know, I don't know. But I also know that there's a lot of it advances that have been done in medicine since losing my mom that I don't know what patients are facing out there now. But I do know that metastatic breast cancer, stage four, maybe three, I would say, depends on how far it is, it's just not talked about enough. And this is an issue that I know uh, people are taking a stand on and being like, hey, you know, a lot of people are like, yes, early detection, yes, this is true, and you should detect it, like, touch yourself, you know, get, get, it, get yourself checked get a pap smear, get, guys, get your stuff checked too. You know, but like, what happens if a doctor misses it, hmm? Don't feel crazy, first of all, if you're like, something's up, I'm getting a lot of pain. Like, no, you know your body, so keep fighting for it until someone freaking listens to you and helps you out. But what happens when they do find it and it's too late, right? This is something that I think medicine needs to work on and people need to work on talking about because there's a lot of people out there that are facing these later stages of cancer and they don't have anyone to turn to. My mom would just feel like, <gasps> even like heck. It's not, it's not like to shame anyone for getting diagnosed at an earlier stage. No, seriously. But like, you know, when Robin Roberts was going through it all, my mom was like, that's, you know, that's, I'm so glad that like she's getting treated, but like, what about all of us? Like stage four, stage three, someone, someone, I'm not even kidding, someone, a parent at my high school, <sighs> she went up to my mom, she's like, oh wow, I thought, I thought stage four was terminal. What? <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Like, there are just things that you just don't tell people that have been diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, and that's one of them. So don't say that. Um, obviously, they know the stats. But it needs to be more of a conversation of like, hey, how do we prevent it from getting there? But oh, okay, cool. It's at this stage. All right, do not feel alone. We're here, we're gonna help you out. Like there are so many more things. So that's definitely something that I'm trying to somehow help in, in a way. I have a friend that's actually going to Washington DC to talk about metastatic breast cancer. She's a freaking rock star. Olivia, you're amazing. But I'm trying to find a way to do that 
in my personal little area where I can't fly to Washington, D.C. right now. Right now. Maybe I can soon. Um, and just tell you guys, like, hey, if your parent is diagnosed at a, at a later stage, there are options. Um, yes, it's harder to get to the five-year mark of survival. Yes, it is. But my mom made it three years, three months, and 22 days. When people were like, uh, we don't really know. So a lot of it also has to do with just like, <sighs> mind over matter. My mom would always say that. I don't know who I would be now had I still had my mom here, but I know who I am now without my mom and I think I'm doing pretty good. I would say so. I, I graduated from college. First generation college student, my mom would have been very proud. Like I said, I went to school a week after my mom passed away and people were surprised, but I was like, what am I gonna do? And a lot of people were like, well, you should just like, Amy, we understand if you need to take some time away. I'm like, do what? Wallow? What the heck? That's not gonna do me anything. So I went back to school and I like, I did that. Like I said, things were messy for like five months, but then things started getting better. And then my now husband like, was like, hey girl, how you doing? No, I'm just kidding. We were friends for a very long time, then best friends, and then like, now here we are. But like, that camaraderie really helped, turning to your friends. I spent the night at my friend's house a lot after it happened, uh, because I guess I just didn't want to be in that same kind of bubble. And she was great. Liz, you're fantastic. I talked to my friends on the phone. I just wanted to get back to normal. But it was a new normal, because I wasn't in the same place, and... I think it, there's some benefits to that because then you're like it's not it's not everything's not the same right but I still had to go to school and that was the same so you just have to look at it a different way I would look at this uh, this courtyard where I'd call my mom before um, one of my classes and I could not sit there again necessarily and think of things the same way because I'd be like yeah yeah, but just a few months ago, I could call my mom and do that. That's another thing. I would reach for the phone to call my mom. I still have my mom's number in my phone. Still. It's been seven years and I still have it. Um, that's fine. That's fine. There are no rules as to like how you're supposed to do things. But the biggest thing I can tell you guys is that you need to take care of yourself because you just do. <laughs> you just do. Like Your parents didn't fight for you, for your life to provide for you, you, you know, for you to just kind of throw that away. Um, and even if like it's a grandmother or like an aunt and uncle, they still, they would want you to be okay. Yeah, now that it's been seven years, I, there have been a lot of birthdays now without my mom and it's strange, but then I'm also like, what would my mom think of me now? <laughs> like, whoa. Also, being here in California, my mom and I never thought we were gonna be here, so that's interesting. Again, I just talk about her a lot more, and I just want you guys to know that, like, yeah, it sucks. It really does. It doesn't necessarily just, like, woo, everything's sunshine and rainbows. Like, it's fine. Unless my mom, I'm cool. No, but I'm here, and I am my mother's daughter, and I'm working my butt off, and I have so many opportunities, and I'm just seizing the moment. I'm just, like, freaking going for it, because why the F not, right? Life is short. So I hope this helps you guys out. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I just haven't had the courage to do so. Yeah, and I just didn't want to share that much, but why the F not, right? Kira, one of my closest friends that I actually just met this year, she, that's one of her things. She's like, why the hmm not? But I don't cut, so that's why I say F. But yeah, why not, right? If you guys have any questions at all, please, leave them down below. I will try to answer them if I can. And uh, please just be kind to one another. I sounded like Ellen, should you be proud? But like, let's just, this is a positive atmosphere here. Let's keep it positive. And yeah, everything's gonna be okay. Okay, bye.